Tile D is a map editor for 2D games. We're going to use it with Flutter and Flame. For this tutorial, create a new map with a width of 20 tiles and a height of 50 tiles. The tile size is 32 by 32 pixels. We're going to keep the orientation as orthogonal and change the tile layer format to base64 uncompressed. The tile size is based on your sprite sheet. 32 by 32 is the most common. Save the map in TMX format. You will need a sprite sheet of tile objects for this tutorial. I'm going to save my file as tutorial. When you go into tile D, there's this layers box here on the right hand side. I'm going to create a base layer of some grass or some ground level. And then on top of that, put a house, maybe um, some other elements like lanterns, just for this demonstration. I'm not going to put collidable objects in this view here, but I think you can probably figure it out. And I'll produce another video in the future with collisions. But once I have the, the layer set up for the ground, we're going to need to import a tile set. So I'm going to use a graphic, which is a sprite sheet of uh, objects like trees and ground. So copy these settings, open up it, open up a tile sheet. And you can see that there's these individual tiles, right? So pieces of grass, pieces of building. So we're going to use the tile D like a paintbrush and fill in some of the elements. And we'll just do it very quickly. Obviously, when you're building your own game, you can spend a lot of time making the detailed maps. But first, of all, we need to select something like a piece of grass or something. We're going to fill it all in. So select the bucket tool, which is the fill tool. And then when you move it on, you're going to just fill the entire map uh, with that layer, which is grass right now. I'm going to select the building. So press and hold your mouse and then just kind of paint over the area that you want to grab. I think my tile size is actually off, but it's, it'll, it'll work. Oh, that's the wrong one. So use the stamp tool. This one looks like, kind of like a rubber stamp. And you'll notice the problem that the, the house just completely overwrote the grass. So what we actually want to do is use a system of layers and put the building on top of the ground so that um, you know, the, the, the portion of the tile that is transparent, it doesn't overwrite the, the bottom portion, which is the grass. And this building's layer needs to be at the top, right? So if you if it's below it, it's going to be hidden by uh, the ground. So you know, even if you try to drag and drop the house onto the, that layer, because the layer is hidden, you won't be able to see it. So what you need to do is just uh, get the ground below the buildings, and then with the buildings on the top, you can see it. Using this similar technique, you can grab another object, such as this gate here. And I think my tiles are a bit off in the size, but uh, it'll, it'll work. You can, you can grab that missing tile on the left-hand side just individually and drop it in if you want to. You can also just click on that single tile and then place it in the place, and then the top portion of the gate looks good. And I'll also put some of these lanterns on. So just maybe select some of them. Oh, I have a little bit of the additional tile on it. I think I might just live with it. I'm not going to make it too complex. It doesn't matter for the game. If you do want to make it more complex, it'll work uh, either way. We're not doing a collision detection in this next video. So, you know, no matter how many objects you put on there, It'll, it'll work in this next uh, game. Okay, in the next project, so save it, and then we'll put this into a flame flutter game. There are many other videos in the 2022 flame tutorial series, as well as 26 videos in the 2021 series. Subscribe to the channel for future updates. These videos are on Teachable as a free course. There is no upsell as this is purely a hobby for me. I'm using Teachable only for the progress so you can see how far you have progressed through the course. It also makes it easier for me to organize the videos and the sequence of information that I'm presenting. 
in whatever way you choose to learn, the most important thing is to keep on trying to learn and have fun while doing it. Have a great day.